Welcome! In this video I'm going to be installing a broken filament detector on this FLSUN Q5 3D printer. I've made a number of other videos on this printer. If you would like to see those, check out my playlist in the description. Now here are some of the parts I'm going to be installing, and I'll put links to some of these things in the description. And if you use those links, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So this is the filament detector here. It comes with a cable, and then I'm using this 3D printed bracket. So I'll put a link below to Thingiverse where you can download this and print it. I used the settings they recommended, which I think was a 30% infill, and I printed it on the FLSUN Q5. And then I went to my local hardware store and got some nuts and bolts. Now this is kind of up to you what you use here, but this is what I got. I got two different screw sizes. I got M3 by 20. I got two of those. I got M3 by 16. I got three of those. I got 10 flat washers and five lock nuts. So here are the shorter screws and the longer screws and the lock nut, and I got washers to go on both sides. So I'll show how this part goes together. So this is going to mount on the side of the 3D printer. This is the face that was printed down, super smooth. The filament detector is going to go on like this, and it's going to face down. So I'm going to take the longer, which these are the 20 millimeter screws, and I wanted to use like hex head screws. They didn't have any long enough, so I went with these Phillips. I'll put both of those in here. Those will line up with the holes here. I'll then put a washer on each of these. It's a little tricky to do. Actually, there's a little trick. What I'll do is I'll twist this, and that'll put a little tension on those bolts so I can get the nuts started. I could also put a screwdriver on the other side. Okay, so that twisting worked well. Then to tighten these, I'm using a number one screwdriver. And these seem to be five and a half millimeter sockets. I don't have one of those, but I found it fits this uh, 7 seconds socket pretty good. So I'll tighten these down. Now there's a little bit of slop in here in case you need to adjust this. So I'm not going to crank them down super tight. We can change these later. Okay, so that's mounted on there. Looks nice. Now let's take a look at the printer. Okay, so I've unplugged the printer. I want to remove this top plate. This is going to mount right here. So you can use the hex key that came with the FL Sun Q5. I'm going to use an electric screwdriver. It's a 2.5 millimeter. So I'll remove all these screws. Now you want to remember the orientation. The spool holder was on there. So you get it back on the right way. And I took those out with an electric screwdriver. When I put those back in, I do want to at least hand thread them. If I do use the electric screwdriver, I'm not going to torque them down tight with it. So here we can see the guts. So there's a fan here in the way of where we want to mount this. So I'll remove that. That's also the 2.5 millimeter. Now we'll put this back in after we get it installed. We just need access for the bolts. Okay. Now this is going to go on here, and it almost looks like we won't be able to put the plate on, but we can slide it in under. Now with this, we can put the screw heads in or out. I'll probably try and put them out, and then we'll put the nuts on the inside. And I think I mentioned before, these are nylon locking nuts. You don't want them to vibrate and fall off into this. So I'll put all of these bolts in, or machine screws, I should say. I'll line this up on the outside. And then I'm going to put the washers and nuts on the inside. So it's a little bit tight in here. I'm going to take a little piece of filament here, put it through the filament detector into the extruder. I'll throw a picture up on the screen of what this looks like on the inside. So now I'll tighten these down. That looks good. I'll tighten this up now. Now I don't want to tighten this too tight. I don't want to crack the sensor. This doesn't need to be real tight. Now I can reinstall the fan. Okay, next we need to route the cable. There's a good size opening right here where the main cable comes in. So I'll pull that down and feed this up through there. Now the connector is the same on both sides of this. So this is going to plug into the back side of the sensor. Now it's keyed, it has these little lines here that will line up on the sensor. So I'll press that in. The other end is going to plug in right here. So you see the colored ones, you skip one, and then go to this one. So I'm going to work on tidying up this cable. I'm going to use these cable ties. They're four millimeter by 200 millimeter. These are a lot longer than I need, but it's what I have on hand. So I'm going to feed them in one hole. I'll use my other hand to push them out an adjacent hole. There we go. I'm going to leave at least a little bit of slack here. And I'll cinch that down and I'll snip it off with my flush cut pliers. I'm going to do the same here. There's quite a bit up top here, so I'll bundle this up. 
and I'm going to pass this under all the other wires. I'm not going to cinch this down super tight. And again, I have this unplugged and we're all connected. Now I'm going to reinstall the top cover. So I didn't quite leave enough clearance here. I was able to just push that up, should have room now. There we go. Okay, we're all finished up. I'm going to install some filament here. I'll want to run it through the detector. Let's turn the printer on. So if we look at the detector here, I'll pass filament through it and watch right here. You can see a blue light turned on. Hopefully you can see that. So that's letting the printer know it detects filament. So now we'll pass it through the extruder. So this makes it a little bit trickier to load. Okay, so I'm gonna get this loaded up and we'll start a print. And then I'm going to snip this and we'll see what happens. Okay, so I'm printing, I'll cut the filament. Now it'll take a minute because it has to move the filament through the detector. Okay, the light just went off. And now it's sounding an alarm, and it moved over to the side. So if we look at the screen here, it says resume or stop, so we could load some new filament in and resume the print. So that was installing a broken filament detector on an FLSUN Q5 3D printer. I have a lot of 3D prints ahead of me for a project, so I'll be going through quite a bit of filament, and as a result, I'll have rolls that I want to finish off. Having this broken filament detector will allow me to finish off the rolls, it'll sound an alarm, so I can come and replace the roll and continue printing. This was a mostly easy install if you're familiar working with tools and such. You do have to 3D print the bracket, and there are other bracket designs. I like this one. I don't know if it's any better or worse than others. And you'll need to find some mounting hardware. Now you could probably just zip tie this. If you passed a zip tie through one side here, out the other, and tighten it really tight, and you could probably do something similar here, and that would probably hold it just fine. My, on my other 3D printer, this thing's flopping in the wind, and it works well that way. You just don't want it falling off and binding up. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.